Hi there! Today I'm going to share about my resources and also courses that I attend to pass my AKT exam. First, some introduction about the AKT exam and then I'll go on to the resources that I use and then next the courses and then my study plan and then how did the exam day when. If you want to skip the first part, then you can go straight to the resources. Okay, so basically AKT is the first part of the MRCGP exam which is the exam to become a GP in the UK. It is a computer-based exam. It tests the knowledge base for independent GPs in the UK. Uh, we have to answer 200 questions in 3 hours and 10 minutes. So basically, roughly, we'll have less than a minute for each question. So speed is the utmost importance. The questions are distributed in three categories. 80% will be clinical knowledge, 10% is evidence-based practice, and then 10% is the primary care organisation. And all the questions are generally uh, related to the UK general practice. We can only sit for the AKT exam after the first year of the GP, so basically during the second year onwards. There's only maximum of four attempts that's allowed. And then after this, we need the support from our the educational supervisor. For more information about the dates, how to book it, then I'll link the uh, link down below. So I did during my ST2. So once I entered ST2, then I booked for the AKT exam, which I allow about three, four months at least to be in the general practice just so that I get the experience because I came directly from the hospital. The knowledge during the GP uh, placement actually helps for the exam as well. For resources for the exam, so the first one is past medicine. Past medicine basically uh, the questions are more difficult but the purpose of doing the past medicine AKT questions is basically to study. There will be explanation uh, along with the question and I feel this is useful for revision. Not only that we get to exercise our brain in the critical thinking but also the explanation itself. The second is a GP self-test. So GP self-test is if we are the uh, associated in training, we will get free access to the GP self-test. Otherwise, you would have to pay for it. I feel the questions in GP self-test is actually more similar to the questions in the AKT. The benefit is you can also time yourself as well which will be useful um, nearer to the exam so that we can ensure that we only spend like limited amount on each question. Third is the Innovate. Innovate is kind of journal for the associate in training for GP trainees and also we get free access if we're a member of the RCGP as a trainee and some of the question and GP self-test actually is taken from the Innovate itself. The good thing about questions in Innovate is it also has a link. There's a short paragraph for us to read about. Fourth is iMedic. So so iMedics is a free AKT question bank. It's really good. It does go through like this, kind of you start with the most basic questions and then go upwards the questions get more and more difficult. I do go through the questions um, by topics. I feel that the iMedics is a bit too basic but it is useful um, to get through but probably uh, I didn't finish the whole thing because I did it towards nearer to the exam and I feel it's too basic and probably best if you want to start iMedics maybe start it at the beginning because it does start from basic and go upwards like more difficult and more difficult and there are some questions that are in iMedics that are not in past medicine or GP self-test. Fifth resource that I use is uh, eMedica flashcards. I'm not really sure I just go through the flashcards twice really throughout my whole revision. I do read it like just before sleep. I borrowed it from my friends who lend it to me. For me I feel that reading is quite difficult for me to retain information but it's really useful as well but uh, I'm not sure how much useful will it be for the exam but if you have it that's fine if you don't then that's fine as well. The sixth is the Oxford Handbook of GP itself. First few pages of the Oxford handbook will actually cover the admin side of the GP. You can have a read like at the start of your revision just and then next is a YouTube channel of eMedica and Aman Aurora. I did go through the eMedica 30 days to AKT. I went through all the videos. It's really short, really quick to go through. I went through it in one day and then the Aman Aurora they also have some questions and they do have like this um, email list that you can subscribe and then they will email you about the AKT topic every day so sometimes when this come out in my email and I feel that I don't know the topic then I will click the link and I will watch the video um, link uh, in the YouTube. Other resources that were suggested other people have used but I didn't use personally myself are uh, BMJ on examination so they have their own question bank and people feel that it's helpful as well. I feel that maybe it's similar to the past medicine and then e-medical courses. Personally I didn't do any 
many e-medical courses but I know a lot of people who have who have done it and they swear by it but I, I didn't I didn't want to spend money on the courses third is also Aman Aurora courses which is a similar e-medical just a different company I didn't pay for the courses but I do attend the kind of free courses just like an hour and a half just to see what the how the teaching was about um, both for e-medical and Aman Aurora they do have some free AKT where they go through like limited question maybe like five or six i'm not sure but america did go through more um during this trial um so yeah you can try and see how you like it if you like it then you can go on the courses i went to one course which is the rcgp akt course in the morning it covered the statistics and then in the afternoon it went through all the high yield topics in the organization and i mean all the high yield topics that we need to focus on then i feel this is quite useful i think i did it around one two months before before the exam and then at the end of the course they provide a link where we can do the mock exam and then they give us the result of the mock exam one week after just to see how we are doing kind of one month prior to exam the questions were actually confidential uh, we are not allowed to release the questions also we can't keep the questions so basically it's just a good way of us um, assessing ourselves and see where we are at just like you know prior to the exam uh, then we know how much we need to do for the exam itself I can't remember what marks did I get but I will put it so with the study plan so I started about three four months prior to exam uh, the reason is I have two children I'm quite a busy mom also have got the GP placement so I thought I would start a bit earlier just so that I have enough time to cover everything um, because I feel that when I had a look at the GP curriculum on the RCGP website it's quite a lot that I have to cover the other thing that I go through is on the RCGP website itself there are quite a lot of tips and advice on how to go through the exam so i did go through the, all the things that they have provided and they also have the list of topics that we should focus on which is kind of feedback from every akt exam just recently they have summarized whatever topics that we need to focus on because from the akt feedback they feel that we don't have enough knowledge on this so basically if you want to focus then definitely focus on these topics after you've done the revision now different people have different priority maybe single people they can have shorter narrative to the exam but three four months prior i started first doing questions so i started with path past medicine about 50 to 100 questions a day in the evening and then up to 200 questions a day in on the weekend i also tried to do a bit of uh, reading on the cks nice um, i did download the aman aurora they have provided this free study plan like what topics you need to do if you have 60 days towards the exam then day 60 you read this day 59 so basically that's kind of good guide to read for the AKT. I did start it but then it was too much and I can't really retain on the CKS nice. I'm um, actually seeing patients I feel that helped me retain the information a bit better so actually I just read the CKS nice during my kind of work. If I see a patient then I will read the CKS nice and then I feel that that helps me to retain the information a bit more. And then I chose to do the exam after four months being in the GP placement as I mentioned during my SD2 placement. So that I could apply what I learned during my daily GP work as a GP registrar and I do feel that this is helpful so if you're in the hospital I feel that it's a bit more difficult because I've from my experience those GP placement actually helps for my exam as well I didn't wait until SD3 just because I wanted to focus on um, the second part for my SD3 so I did try for the SD2 I wanted to pass during my SD2 so that during SD3 there, there's also more portfolio things that needed to be done during SD3 and I know that they will increase the number of patients at SD3 so I will be busier in SD3 so that's why I didn't want to wait until SD3 to do the AKT also if I fail my AKT in SD2 at least I've got um, a longer time to complete the exams as well during the SD2 I was actually uh, part-time so I was doing 80% training this gives me a bit more time to study at home towards nearer to the exam I think about two three weeks nearer to the exam I started to time myself and especially two weeks one week prior to exam so just use the self time either you can self time with your timer or use the time the GP self test now on the exam day itself choose the time that suits 
yourself uh, the exam is being held in the morning and in the afternoon I choose the afternoon some people choose in the morning because they want to get it done however I choose in the afternoon because I don't want to be stuck in the traffic I know I have to drive to the exam center I have to park and I have to look for the area so I don't want to be rushing early in the morning where all this rush hour traffic I did also get lost for 20 minutes I reached the place about one hour prior to the registration time even though I got lost I have like another half an hour before that I definitely allocate enough time to travel eat before the exam I actually forgotten to eat I grabbed something from the cafe next door now the exam place itself it was very warm but bring sweater just as precaution I brought sweater but then it was getting too warm so most people kept it in the locker so the test area is actually uh, kind of just like the uh, objective part of the driving test so uh, we go to the center now that center uh, that I did uh, in Chester they don't do the driving test anymore it is just for the AKT exam but bring the ID either passport or driving license a register they give some paper for us to read kind of what do's and don'ts to do during the exam and then they give a locker key where we can keep all our belongings and we're not supposed to have anything like no smart watch no watch or nothing in the pockets as well and then we go into this room which is kind of a room full with computers and all have this kind of barrier between one candidate and another and then the computer itself we will have to go through kind of trial questions just so that we understand the format you can actually go through this before going to the exam itself is on the rcgp website or the pearson view website they email us like few days before now because i was in the afternoon so we had to actually wait the morning session finish and we can't actually pass by because obviously they seen the question well, after registering then they <laughs> put us in this uh, small closet where all of us like huddled together in the closet in the mask of course <laughs> and then once the morning uh candidates has gone then we can go out again so we were like hidden before basically you just go through at your own pace the computer has its own timer now with the time itself i feel that you do need to be quick um if you feel that you can't solve the questions then just move on to the next like if you're taking too long to solve the statistics then just move move along move along and then um, flag the question that you want to go back and then after you finish answering all the questions go back to the question that you flag and then you can go through it again the other thing is um, don't leave out the questions blank if you're not sure then just click uh, uh, one answer with the statistics i feel that it's not as hard you don't have to do a lot of calculations there are calculators yeah but as long as you know the basic of statistics then that's fine we do have i mean our gp on the afternoon uh, just focus on statistics and i feel that's enough also i did do the course or uh, the rcgp course which go through the statistics the past medicine also have quite a lot of questions on the statistics uh, with the organization just going through the past medicine and then the high yield topics that they actually discussed they they did go through the admin organization for very briefly in the uh, rcgp akt course that i did i know that a lot of people were saying good things about the e-medica i mean and statistics course um, i can't comment on that because i didn't go through um, the course i mean in comparison of the akt and um, mrcp i feel of course the mrcp part one is the most difficult exam i've ever seen past medicine question is more difficult uh, compared to the AKT exam that's why it's good to go through the past medicine as a revision you will have this bulk of knowledge and then just continue going through the rest of question bank i hope that you find this helpful and if you have any more questions then please pop down below another thing is go through the aku as well the essential knowledge update on the rcgp website and maybe like the first five years uh, the other thing is the driving license restriction you know seizures uh, dvla fitness to fly they normally get to come out in the exam uh, medicine doses calculation um, I did have to calculate a few medicine doses. Now, I did go through the past medicine twice. So the first time is I go through the whole questions and then the second is I repeated the wrong ones to see why I got wrong and then I attempted it again. You should be able to calculate the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value. Anyway, I'll just put all the lists here. Normal rashes, 
pediatric rashes, otoscope pictures, reading spirometry, fundoscopy pictures, vaccination criteria as well, adults versus children. I think this is also covered in the past medicine. BNF palliative medicine list. Anyway, I'm sure if you go through uh, the resources that I listed down, you will also pass. Just remember to leave a good amount of time for you to start. You can just start just relax and then nearer to the exam, you can be more intensive. I did take a few study leave as well, including annual leave to help with my study. So good luck for the exam. I'll link another video about just a very brief tips on how to pass AKT. Now I'm doing some Q&A next week. So if you have any questions, then please link down below and I will answer them for next week's video. See you. Bye.